Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat Shea, and you are watching Shea with the Hobbies. We are in the very last month of 2022. Oh my gosh, you guys, this year has just flown by. But as we are entering the end of 2022 and the beginning of 2023, we are also celebrating kwanzaa So before we get into today's prompt and what we're going to talk about for this episode of Riley Conversations, I'll let my lovely co-host introduce her though. Hi, I'm Britt. My channel is Britt Riderly. It's a book and author too, where I talk about the intersections of literature and culture, ABC, one, two, three, all of that sounds like it entails. It entails. Uh, if you like letters and you like numbers and you like entails, head on over to my channel. If you like the vibe, give the video that you're watching a thumbs up and give that big red button a smashed and we can be internet friends. I had a caramel macchiato also. So receive my energy through the frame of that knowledge. Oh, y'all, we're in for a nice, nice treat tonight. Let's be ready. Um, okay, so today is December 27th. It is also day two of kwanzaa or Kwanzaa, in which the day is Kuji Chagalia, which means self-determination. Uh, the prompt for today is a year in review, and you're supposed to talk about your goals. And so what we've been doing in December since we started this collaboration is just going back and reflecting on the year. And one of our main goals for this year was to do something new, to try different things, to try to expand our realm of conversation and writerly conversations and to challenge ourselves. So it's going to be fun to look and see how we did this. Now, this will be a two-part deal solely because, you know, your girl messed up this summer and we were behind the episode and wanted to fix that. And it's like content into December. We all need some. So here's a video from both of us this month. All right. So let's do the random number picker and generate. Okay. And it says 14 minutes. So we get the 14 minutes. Time. Okay. All right. 14. Here we go. Um, this is season two, episode one, our 2022 writing themes. Families choose not to talk about these things. These things don't get handled how they should. And one of the things I wanted to play on in telling the story is the story in itself is breaking that societal and or generational curse of we're just not going to speak about it. No, we are going to speak about it so that we can address it and we're going to know and that's going to change the dynamics of it. So I feel like I talked a lot, but yeah, that's a, that's the theme for Penelope's Curve and how that, that's what I, I got for that. No, I was talking a lot too. So I... I don't, I don't know why we're keeping, we keep meeting or other things because we're like not trying to have this mic messed up. But like, yeah, I was like, yeah, 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 the whole time you were talking. Um... I love that, like, in both of ours, we deal with, like, like you said, women and girls. And because also these, these women had girlhoods, like they had childhoods where they may have interacted with molestation or sexual assault or abuse or verbal, um, emotional, mental, right? Like they've, like, they have a profile. They have a psychological profile and that doesn't start when you're 21 or 18. It starts when it starts early, like as soon as you are sentient, your body is remembering things, even if you don't remember it, whether it's because you were too young to hold memory or because you've repressed the memory, like your body is holding it. There's this book called Your Body Keeps the Score written by like, I think this like Austrian psychologist or something talking about how your body stores trauma. Okay, that seems like as good as any as a place to stop. Um, reactions i <laughs> i'm just looking at the way i consistently wear this hoodie without shame and i'm gonna continue to do so also that hoodie was new at that point so i was wearing it all the time my dad got it for me for christmas because they know i like all things comfy and yeah i was it was that was <laughs> the gift i was most excited about it like you can, I can get technology and I will be duly impressed. I really, really will. Would you give me a fuzzy pair of socks? Me and my sister, my parents literally are just like, they look at us like we're kids that play with the box instead of the toy. That's what they look at us every year, but we're just like, Jay, look at these socks. Wow. Let me feel them. Oh my word. Like we just really go in. But anyway, 
I was, I was, <laughs> I, I love that to your point of like, we wanted to talk more about like a mix of, of writing and reading. Um, I think the way that we sort of have tried to go about doing that is by talking about how books influence our writing as we're teasing apart our writing decisions more. And I'm already like seeing that and us talking about our, our writing themes and you talking about, okay, well, I'm talking about these themes, I'm talking about X themes and it's being like, yeah, and there are books that talk about this as well. So I think, I think we're off to a strong start in January for sure. Well, I think it's interesting that it's like a year of you reflection on 2020 goals, 2023 goals. And I'm like, how's Penelope's curve doing? How's, how's that? How's that going? How? Because like, again, in this video, we talk about the things we want to write this year. So uh, I'm like, of the four things that I said I want to write, how many, uh, where, where are they now? So that was, that was what was going through my head. I was like, my girl has been putting in work this year. My girl has been putting in work because like January break to like, December Brit right now like I see it in your face and I'm like yo all right and I'm always like I don't know if you like feel away if, I, if it's in there or not but like I don't feel no I way it's something to acknowledge that your friend has been putting in work for something that they like are happy about and it has done like wonders mental health wise this year because like I know like how much it's helped you to work out and stuff so I was just sitting there and I was like oh so that's what I thought. And then uh, when you got to the the body keeps the score, I was like, okay, this is at least three people I know this year who have brought this book up to me to read. So it's definitely on the list of things that I need to like make a priority. So that was what was going through my head as I watched it. But I also was like, oh, and the last thing I was like, girl, then locks needed to come down. That was the other thought that I had. So as y'all see, your girl was all over the place with that one. So there is that. There is that. Okay. Our thoughts are always everywhere. We're always like the content, but also and foremost, how was I looking like I was looking right? like I was doing? Last year when it, this year I feel like last year was like beanies and hoop earrings. And like this year it has not been that. Like and, but trust me, it will be it will be by the next video because <laughs> you're gonna brain her this weekend. It's it's brain the, the brain need to come back. I'm, I miss them so so much. So so much. <laughs> I miss my spring twists. I like I just love how I look in spring twists every single time. Spring twists are the best thing since sliced bread. You'll never get me to say that they're not. Oh, and also those nails. The nails oh, yeah, we're giving. Yeah, I feel like we've done less, way less nails this year than last year. Like last year, we were like, oh, this is it. and then this year, it's just been like, life has been happening. Um, <laughs> okay, but the next number is 30. So for video two. It's okay. Number 30 for video two. We are talking about what formulas might say about writers' secret fantasies starting 30 minutes in. Look at the spring twist, still giving faithfully. So reliable. Here we go. Also, I knew that right. So it doesn't make sense. I was say, also, I knew that they need to come down because obviously I have a head wrap. So you cannot see the roof. Obviously, I, I learned. Listen, like, we just got to stretch your style sometimes. That's hey, just what it is. We really do. We really do. Uh, but this also taught me to stop stretching styles because I think like I lost a couple likes in this. And I was like, you better not ever do this to you. <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> you know, we are always growing and learning. 30 minutes. Here we go. It doesn't make sense that we create these worlds meant for children in which they're all alone all the time. And there's this, and this loneliness doesn't ever get dealt with. Like, because the truth is, part of why the pandemic was so traumatic, is so traumatic for so many people, is because most of us aren't used to just being alone. Let alone being alone, going through traumatic things. Like, it's just not a thing. And I just think it's giving a false reality. And then the thought is, well, it's fantasy. So even in your, your fantasies are hell. Like, I don't understand that. Like, you're in your fantasy, your fantasy is death and loss. 
or your fantasy is that you can go through death and loss and not feel it and still come out great like it sounds like an illusion and not just a fantasy like like it yeah I, I don't know it just I feel like yeah. this is where words don't mean what we think they mean I, I don't know I, don't I mean know. you just at some point you just have to decide what elements of the story are fantasy that's it like is the world building the only fantasy or is the fantasy the entire scenario including the characters and their emotions because if that's what it is put that at the beginning of the, of the novel dedication to my readers i love young readers just so you know this entire book is a fantasy including the characters and their emotional registers completely fantastic <laughs> We can <laughs> we can stop there. Is that a funny part? Is that has literally been a line we've said probably in every video since that video. Like, then what is your fantasy? Like, what is it saying about what your fantasy is? And so, like, I love it going back and being like, "So your fantasy is hell, well, girl." Okay. I literally <laughs> cackled at that part. I did. Chill out. And that's how you know the conversations don't be like predetermined. Like they would be like off the cuff, our thoughts and sentences. Like I feel like that was the first time I ever said that out loud, but like it made so much sense. Like y'all be sending these characters through literal hell. And this was the fantasy of the book that you always wanted to write for your whole life. Why? Uh, that sounds sad. I think this. This is one of my favorite episodes of season two. Part of it is because that thumbnail is fire. I'll say it. That thumbnail giving, it, it was so good. Oh, and it was the just thumbnail game has like skyrocketed this year. Like skyrocketed for sure. It has. Cache knows my thumbnails used to be basic for a reason. It was all like the muster. But now got a little razzle dazzle. Huh? Got a little so don't, 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 don't. They're good. They're gooder. I, and that was my first time really like, I'm really gonna try. Um, it was a lot of moving parts. There was the blackboard in the background. I need y'all to know how impressed that, that was my first level up. It was, it was my first time being like, let's try to do, oh. and it worked out. I was pleased. I clicked on that video now less than five times for the thumbnail. Like it was a surprise to me each time. I was like, who was that cute little thumbnail? Click. That's me every time. It is. So the thumbnail is a, is is part of where I my favorite. It's just the it's the core memory for me now. It's like a level up for me now. But also. We haven't wanted to have that conversation for a mad long time. Y'all can't know. We had versions of that conversation, snippets of that conversation long before we actually got around to actually recording it because it was just something that was like invasive. Like it, it became more and more glaringly obvious when we're talking about books and not even trying to talk about craft or anything. It's just like, yeah, I like X, X, and X, but the way this character is reacting or the way this family, like, it just came up. And so I was really happy when we were finally able to like let's get into save the cat like let's open the book and really deal with what it says and then what that becomes and i think this is also a really good perhaps even one of the best examples of our goal of really dealing with writing and reading together right like as cooperative elements so I, I think that's part of why it's one of my favorites because we talk about reading experiences. We also talk about from the writer, like, what is your goal? And this is a very cute little origin story of that question. What's your real fantasy? Because this is where it began. Um, but yeah, no, this is one of my favorite videos for a lot of reasons. And I think it's a good reflection of, of the goal we set for the collaboration. Yeah, no, and I think it's very, like, it, it was, like you're saying, it was a conversation that was happening in part before solely because we were doing what? Supporting Black authors. And at the start of our YouTube journey, most of the books by Black authors that we were reading were Black fantasy books. And so we were put into these fantasy situations and it's still like, I mean, eh, y'all, it was still kind of traumatic. And like, 
and it's like dang like uh and so for because in that section we're talking about like the writers and their standpoint but from like the book standpoint and the save the cat standpoint it was like why do we have to kill off people all the time why do we have to leave people alone and i think that one of the reasons i like this conversation so much is i think that it begins our year-long like cp conversation about being intentional about what we're writing like i think that it like kicked off like a i'm really not liking how this industry moves i'm really not liking how these people write books i really want to be more intentional about how I craft my book. I really want to have more control over how I tell this story because I feel like this conversation was like the catalyst of being like going back to writing as a ministry and really thinking of that in this form of like, this isn't for me. This is supposed to be for other people. This is supposed to be my gift to them. And so that I, I'm like you, like, I like this conversation because I think it's like a, it's an origin point for a really great, great year, for sure. It completely is. But tell me what, what time. 11, 11 minutes. 11 minutes. All right, y'all. This is season two, episode three, to give up or not to give up. I put X amount of time into trying to get a query and it didn't work. I'm willing to switch over to the indie publishing lane or I'm willing to look at indie publishers who are not big five, but they are still publishing books and they're still willing to do advances. Like there are other avenues other than these things that we are so used to being told are the only way to get there. Um, and so I say that just as like, remembering conversations me and Britt have had about uh, querying and like, dang, I wish somebody talked about this. Like, I wish somebody talked about like what they thought about in this time. And I like going into it, I'm thinking, do not tie my worth into someone saying no. Yeah. And I think because I mean, like Shay said when we like Shay said when we started the video, we talked in in episode two about the fantasies of writing, even if you're not writing fantasy, right? Whenever you write something that unless it's nonfiction, there's some fiction behind it. And sometimes the way that we produce people and relationships, it's not even fiction, it's really fantasy, right? So we talked about what fantasies may be driving writers. And I think this conversation is sort of about like the mythology of getting published, because we hear these like epic heroic tales of people who never gave up and were in the query trenches for 10 years and queried hundreds of agents. And I'm over here like, I'm trying to look high and low for a solid 25. Like, where are you finding hundreds of agents at? Okay. I, yeah, I, I kind of have, I was, yeah, okay. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, well, what's this about? And I'm listening and I'm like, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So I, I will say, I like the continuity of us talking in episode two about the fantasies of, writers and then episode three about like the mythologies of publishing i'm like dang we have some good little like circularity going on there ain't it like <laughs> i feel like this year is gonna look a lot more cohesive than last year only because like it, last year was the beginning and this year like it was a lot more and there was a good portion of the year that we actually had planned before we went in and so that also like played a part in it for sure um but no i like that um because again it leads into you know the announcement that you ended up making this year anyway like these conversations right because for the for the part of the conversation like yeah what why why because net, what we've seen on twitter is a lot of writers drawing their words from the, from the nose that they get and feeling like their story isn't worth it and that is a very depressing place to be um and it is it is a very hard place to be um, I know that recently I was like having a conversation with somebody because there was an author who was tweeting about, you know, y'all need to be understanding if, you know, we write interracial couples to get published or whatever so that we, you know, we get sold and we get our, our books out there because these are the sacrifices we have to do in order for them to get our books because obviously, you know, they don't like when we have Black main love characters and I'm like, the fact that being traditionally published means that you don't want to write this, but you want to see your words out in the world so bad that you're willing to compromise the story. You don't even want to tell. That is a very 
toxic workspace to be in. And I believe that yes. at the start of this conversation, it was when we were realizing that now they think that that's not the part of the industry we want to be in. And I think that's a really good thing to say in reflection of 2022 and our goals. I think that I'll, I'll just speak for myself. When I conceived of Riderly Conversations, I really thought about it being a series where I talked to lots of different writers. Like every month, it's a new co-host. We're talking about all like different Riderly things. And like Shane and I said before, we weren't even really that close at the beginning of Riderly Conversations. She was just going to be the first because we already had like a CP relationship. But then the, then, then the chemistry clicked and we just kept going. And I, I like that we have because working with the same person allows you to measure growth a lot easier, I think, than if you're constantly building a new rapport with new people who are not keeping track of what you said five videos ago. It's a different kind of intellectual and ethical, even sometimes accountability. And I think I, I can really say concretely, so not I think, I can really say concretely, Riderly Conversations has made me, has, has moved me further along my writing journey in ways that I had not planned. Right, because when I first started Riley Conversations, I wanted to talk to lots of track hub authors. Like I wanted it to be, um, I mean, in in a way, like part of like networking and building community while also talking craft, right? And it, it's it's been that just not in the way that I foresaw, and in the best ways, not what I foresaw. I don't think I would have ever given up on Trad Pub, and it's not really given up actually. So let me reframe that. I, and originally, I thought of it as it was giving up if I decided to do MD and not Trad Pub. Because of talking through these books, right, talking through the books and the writing process consistently, like the conversations that Shay and I have, the ways that we're like, wait, but, and um, did you, jet like, what, like, all of these different, like, we like these are not planned we're just really having conversations about what we're seeing and what's going on but there is something to be said for having a conversation with someone who is having that conversation honestly and without agenda and so I think that has helped me to get to a place where I am able to be like yeah trad pub is not for me for these reasons Indy is for these reasons I feel like I've grown as a writer because of writerly conversations being what it is and not it being what I planned for it to be and watching this year in review and like knowing that this episode is like oh I'm about to, I'm, I've been I've been, I'm, I'm thinking about making that announcement in this video I wasn't there yet but I was thinking about it seeing the breadcrumbs I'm like oh yeah, it was really conversations with Shay that were slowly but surely softening me to the possibility of Indy in a way that I was completely shut off to at the beginning of this collaboration. And the funny part is we're going to get to one of these videos where I say that, or I was like, I'm going to just say something right now. I'm going to just wait. And then, okay, I'm going to get, okay, it's a couple of weeks. I'll say something now. And this is it. So it's just funny. <laughs> like, no, that literally was what I was doing in my mind. Like, I'm going to just drop this here. Cause I don't know. And then the funny part is, is like, even in that video that we'll eventually get to, I say like, I knew from the moment you started talking to me about your stories, I was like, how is she going to try to put? Like I knew, cause I was just like, your faith is too strong to get with what they're going to require you to do. Like low key do you remember when I read your book and I was like, oh, there's cussing in it. I was like, oh, huh. I didn't expect that. And you were like, yeah. And I was like, I mean, Oh, okay, okay. Because the funny part is, is she's read Jesus Never Went to College. There's no cussing in Jesus Never Went to College. And like, I was just like, I just knew her book wasn't going to have no cussing in it. Um, But in the time that she was writing it, she was writing it for Trap Hub. And so she was writing it to fit what that audience would care for, expect, and not what the audience she was looking for, right? And so I just think like, full circle moment, just getting to see and know like, you know, for everything, there is a time and a season is the truth. Is the truth. Is the truth. So, it's the whole truth. Okay, okay, we're on episode four. What's the time stamp? Okay, yeah, let me do the randomizer on my back. Oh, we're going to be at the end. 53. 53? I'm glad yeah. for a little bit. Do we have that in there? We might not. Really? <laughs> oh, no, that's a 51 minute video. <laughs> right? One of our short videos randomly. Oh, 48. 
Okay, still <laughs> near the still end. Still at the end, right? That's okay, we'll see what's being said. Right. Darn near intros, but you know, we gonna see. Right. Oh, she in her bag on something. Times that I wrote yeah. those and like looking back, like yeah. Woo. So when you were when you were reading that, I was like, one. I cannot wait to see what you write when you turn thirty. <laughs> that was the first thought that I had. Um, because no, because like you know, like I say all the time, like it's a different thing. And I think about like my 18, 19, 21, 22. And I was just like, yeah, no, those are some crying years. And those are some like figuring out the world years. Um, so I, I thought it was like a beautiful, beautiful reflection. Um, uh, it felt very honest. Um, and it felt very, very vulnerable. And I felt honored to be able to hear something so personal because um, it sounded super personal. Like I, I had to stop for a minute because I was like, I feel like I'm like encroaching on a very personal moment, like listening to this. Um, I, I thought it was beautiful, Britt. Like I really did. I thought it was oh, thank you. Like for sure. Like it, it's a really good poem. I really liked it. Okay, so that was in April, our poetry. Uh, I totally forgot to start the time. And I was like, oh, she'll stop it. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried 30 seconds on the timer when you just said that. I was like, oh, it's okay. I was like, this is a better, this is a good stopping place for this video. Right. So that was our April video. Um, and I did, I, I think my poem, I did my poem, I think is called uh on occasions that I have cried or something like that and so that was Shay's reaction I don't even know if you remember the point oh, you know because it was it was no I don't know if it's that one or I think it was the one that you wrote that you started on your birthday that year before and it took you like a whole year to finish so I don't know if that was the title of it but I remember listening to it and I remember being like she gotta keep going like she just gotta keep keep growing right because like you we know like one of my favorite things to talk about is just how much you learn just living and growing older and so I just remember reading it or listening to it and being like I just can't wait to see where she is at 30 like I just can't wait to see like how much she continues to grow and change and learn and evolve um so yeah no I remember I really I really liked it, I liked it. yeah yeah yeah, so that was that one. Got to get great her flowers. Ew. Thank you. Yeah, no, that poem. It took it took it took the time that it took. Okay, yeah. So this is eight, and when you started, I'm gonna actually start the timer this time. Oh yeah. All right. So this is the last video for this video. The last reaction for this video. Season five, our favorite books of all time. Eight minutes on the Klizok. This is a lawyer and he be dropping books that she need to read and stories and stuff that she needs to become acquainted with. And your girl loves it. It's in the way to my heart is through book recs. Be on it notice. Is. It is. So yeah, okay, I talked about okay. it. There you go, talk about your favorite book, my bad. It's okay. We, we know what it is when we start fangirling. You know, when I get to a certain series, it's going to be all over. So you do exactly what you want to, because I'm going to do the same. So, <laughs> so since we're starting from oldest, uh, oldest to more recent, my, uh, my oldest favorite book is Song of Solomon by Toni Morrison, which was first published in 1977. And Y'all, when I was just, like, I haven't read this book actually in, it's been over a year probably. It's maybe been two years. I mean, I don't know how, you, how well you'll be able to see it, but like there's so much, y'all probably can't see it. Um, Cause I've used like a lot of different color light inks. There is, there's so much ink in this book. <laughs> like there are so many notes and not, and all of them are not profound. Like some of them like, looking at the juxtaposition of small intimacies and larger open spaces. And then some of them, I'm like, oh my goodness, he peed over these women's head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, that's a good place to stop. Um, <laughs> uh, um, random question. Would Song of Solomon fit for your Black SF of the Bar? I mean, it's not, it's not a fantasy. Right, but I wasn't sure if it was sci-fi in a way, because I know they technically, like, beloved, because there's, like, spirits and things. Right, and so, like, but Song of Solomon, Solomon is not a part of that trilogy. Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I guess I was asking, because, okay. I, cause I, you know, I still haven't finished the Toni Morrison book. And I, I mean, definitely... Beloved is a rough read. I wouldn't suggest it to anyone. Oh, yeah, I'm not reading that. No, nah, no, nah. uh-uh, I try, and, um... Yeah. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. I'm going to get to it again one day, but, uh, nah. Not today. Not today. <laughs> I think jazz would be good because I jazz is. I think I might have jazz. And jazz is a very short audio book. It's like three hours or something. Oh, it's oh, very, oh. it's very short. Um, and I, it's, it's not generically sci-fi, but I argue in my dissertation that it's like theoretically sci-fi. Theoretically, in that it's part of the trilogy of beloved jazz paradise and i know i have paradise mm -hmm. and the the way that like beloved has like ghost and re and return like that sort of thing beloved beloved is the one that has the most like um obvious most apparent sci-fi elements and not really sci-fi really speculative um but beloved disappears at the end it, it's written as if she like just bursts it like she just disappears it doesn't say she dies she just disappears uh -huh. um and the way it's described is very like sort of cryptic and then joe trace who was one of the characters in um jazz his mother is her, her name is wild and the speculation is that wild is beloved and so in so much as jazz is sort of a continuation of beloved story the speculative elements of beloved sort of carry over gotcha. to jazz in my mind not in very like apparent ways on the page but just gotcha. because beloved could be wild could be is the foundation of fantasy right. like possibility is the is the foundation of magic right. and so in that way i argue that jazz ha has has some things to say about speculation i'm gonna read it then if, if it's here if it's at the house if it's already here yeah yeah i'll read it for sure okay, I and if there's an audiobook on script or wherever yeah. like also that also that um, so yeah, the, our faves. I think it's. I think we've seen a really good split of bookish to writerly, also. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that, like in that conversation about our faves, we talk about why they're our faves and how they influence our writing. So again, like we, I thinking back to the conversation because I don't feel like we had a conversation in 2022 about what we wanted to do. I feel like we had the conversation in. 2021 in December and I don't think we ever like sat down again and was like I want to make sure that we're talking about equally reading and equally writing I think we just set that intention and we just happen to do it every time um and that's what it like reflecting that's what it's looking like because I'm like oh no this is talking about both things no this is talking about both things and so that's how it feels and so you know we talk about divine orchestration all the time and how that is truly a thing and I just like back to I feel like every December, this is going to be a thing. Like, I'm just really thankful for this collaboration. Like, just getting to look back and think about all the, like, the parts of the conversation that made me giggle or made me laugh or the parts that were called to action for us and the people watching, right? Like, I feel like in the conversations we watch, even in the clips that we saw, there is so much for people to think about and how they're interpreting books, how they're receiving the books they read and how they're writing the books they put out. So... I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm excited for part two. Me too. Y'all are gonna have to wait though. All right. Well, not right. really, actually, but I guess it's the day it'll be it's this tomorrow. Week tomorrow. Right? Yeah, it's tomorrow. So it'll be on the way We'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> hey. In the chat. We'll also, we did oh, okay. So tomorrow we'll have to make sure to open the live chat so we can see it. Or yeah, I'll have to put it in like the the default smaller view instead of like the full screen. The full view, okay. right? So we can see it. Yeah, because now I'm curious, right? And we have more lives 
in the second half. So it would be That's even true. more interesting. Yeah, yeah, even more engagement. Yeah. Okay. Well, y'all okay. look forward to that. Okay. Well, we want to thank you guys for watching this part one. And for those of you guys who are participating in Kwanzathon again this year, we appreciate you guys so, so very much. We, y'all, just everything. Love it. We're so glad that this year has went so well. And thank y'all for watching now. Or if you're watching on the replay, we will see y'all tomorrow, right? So, like, description box below, you're going to see it, hit it, tap it, be there, be square. Because you're not going to see us for a few weeks. Well, what are you? I don't know. We still trying to decide on January 1st. And y'all might see us in the same week. Y'all might see us three times this week. We don't know yet. We don't know. We'll let y'all know. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all later. Bye.